It's simple, man. When you have a fan base that is as miserable, sad, and toxic as Ohio State has, this stuff is going to happen, and it will continue to happen year after year after year. And here's my question to all of you. Do you think that's real and legit? Because I've seen a lot of other people talking about that as well. The staff told Dylan Gabriel, hey, we're moving on. We're going to Jackson Arnold. What a way to start on your Monday morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you like college football and you like drama, you better buckle up. These next few days are about to be some of the craziest, mind-boggling, confusing, and just straight-up ridiculous days you've ever seen in your life. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know what all you sitting there saying. Matt, what are you talking about why they're about to be crazy? And for this reason and this one reason only right here, the transfer portal... It's open. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. The portal is open. And already, we got chaos and a lot to talk about. And I've already brought this up in, I think, three to four other videos, but I'm going to dive right back to it. Matt, pop up this video right here. In this video right here, we talked about how Mike Elko and multiple other head coaches was trying to warn us. And in that video, I just passed the message along to you guys. And if you didn't believe me, well, you're about too soon. To say we got a lot to talk about in today's video might be understating it. As you see right here, the transfer portal, it is currently trending on Twitter. It's a big deal, but what's even a bigger deal is some of these big time names that have entered the portal already on this Monday. But real quick, real quick, before we get into this video, if you like college football content, there's so many of you that are watching currently and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to our channel. And I'm just going to come out and say it. It helps out channels tremendously whenever you subscribe. We'd love for you to be here. And our goal this year, we set a goal every year, is to get 310,000 subscribers before Christmas. Or not Christmas, my bad. But let's say the new year. That's going to be our goal. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. No, not for that. No. Last. All right, so first things first, we got an update on a player that we've been covering very closely the past couple of days or past week or so on the channel, and that's no other than Cam Ward. A lot of people call him Cam because that's short for Cameron, but I normally refer to him as Cameron. It's the same person. Anyways, for those of you that haven't been keeping up with Mr. Cameron Ward, there was reported that 10 plus schools offered him $1 million plus. dollars. I'm going to say that again. 10 plus schools have already offered him $1 million plus, allegedly. Is that true or not? I have no idea. I can't confirm on it, but it's been reported. And to be honest, it makes a lot of sense because even Matt Rowan came out and stated, yeah, a good quarterback in the portal is about one, one and a half to $2 million. And I personally think Cameron Ward would be a great fit for Oregon or now potentially Ohio State. Speaking of Ohio State, it came out this morning that Ohio State, Oregon, USC, Florida State, Washington, Miami, and Wisconsin have emerged as schools to watch for when it comes to his recruitment. I've stated since day one that Oregon one makes so much sense to me, but let me know in the comment section. Where do you think it's going to go? Moving along here to another quarterback we got an update on, Will Rogers, who holds a ton of records in the SEC. He has now been crystal balled to go to Washington. And just like this comment says right here, I couldn't agree anymore. Good fit, but huge drop off from Penix. He hit the nail on the head, and I'll leave it at that. If we got any Washington fans, let me know how you feel about this. But now, finally, moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason and you clicked onto this video. What in the world is going on with Kyle McCord, Ohio State, and Dylan Gabriel in Oklahoma? And just like my man Hayes Fawcett said right here, and for those of you who don't know, this is the guy who's always tweeting out the transfer portal stuff. He stated, as soon as it opened, buckle up. The funny thing is, at the time, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what he meant by that. And little did everybody know, only a few hours after that tweet, the breaking and big time news would come out that Kyle McCord, Ohio State starting quarterback, is entering the portal. And I'll just be upfront and honest with all of you, and I think a lot of people aren't going to agree with this, but I can't wrap my brain around it. I thought Kyle McCord was a good quarterback. Now, don't get it twisted. I don't think he was great or elite, but it was his first year starting, and I thought he did more than an A-OK -okay job. It just seemed like every single week he was getting slightly better and better and better. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think he's good enough to lead you to a championship, but I'm looking at it from this perspective. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Sure, Kyle McCord isn't no Jalen Milrow or Jaden Daniels, but he's up there. I'd say he's easily in the top 20 of quarterbacks in the country. And hey, who knows? Maybe Ohio State can do better, but... I'd be very reluctant to state that right now. And before we go any farther, I gotta state this right now. Here is my biggest question with all of this. I wonder if Kyle McCord is leaving because he wants to leave, or I wonder if he's leaving because Ryan Day told him, hey, it's not working out. We're gonna go get a new quarterback. That's what I wanna know. And personally, I have no idea. I haven't talked to anybody around that Ohio State program. If you know anything, let us know in the comment section or please hit me up. 
I just want to know what's going on because Ryan Day made it clear in the offseason, hey, this is the guy. The court, He shut down the quarterback competition after, what was it, week two? I thought this was a guy that Ohio State and Ryan Day were going to keep around for three or four years and make him the centerpiece. But hey, I guess not. And I have a hard time believing the more I think about it that Kyle McCord's like, yeah, I just don't like it here. I'm going elsewhere. The more I think about it now, my gut's tell me Ryan Day probably told him, yeah, we might look elsewhere. And it's probably a combination of both. That weighed in on Kyle McCord's decision. He said, you know what? If y'all are going to look elsewhere and put me in another quarterback battle, I'm going to look elsewhere. And hey, all power to him. Check on this comment, though. I really like it. If I had to deal with toxic Ohio State fans, I would too. This comment section has proven my point. And yep, I agree. Ohio State fans are the definition of toxic. You can say what you want about Alabama fans, for example, Georgia fans, LSU, Michigan, whatever fan base is out there. But I have yet to see a fan base critique their own players as much as Ohio State fans, especially when it comes to a quarterback position. For example, I know a lot of people hate Alabama right now because they got in, but you don't really see Alabama fans critiquing their players like Ohio State fans. No, 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 no. And it's not even critique in my bad. Critiquing is when you give constructive criticism. Ohio State fans just blatantly and openly hate their players sometimes. Yes, Alabama fans was like, yeah, Jail Miro's got to play better after the Texas game, but that's criticism. Everybody and their mama was like, oh yeah, Jalen Miller's got to play better. And he did. He stepped up. And also, I got to throw in there, although Alabama fans were somewhat questionable about Jalen Miller and was asking, hey, is this really the guy? There was never throwing him under the bus. As soon as Ohio State lost to Michigan, I saw all these Ohio State fans throwing Kyle McCord under the bus. And I backed him up. Y'all remember that video I made? I backed him up. I was like, guys, what are you talking about? Ohio State didn't lose because of Kyle McCord. They lost because of Ryan Day. He's a fraud. Terrible coaching. I tell you right now, nobody is going to have Kyle McCord's back more than me. Let me make this evidently clear. He was not the problem at Ohio State this year. No way. If you want to put the blame on Kyle McCord, I'm sorry. I try to respect all opinions, but if you believe that, you don't know ball. Kyle McCord had a good year, and I'll stand on that heel to the day I die. And oh, what do you know, I just stumbled across this comment, and this is from an Ohio State fan. So if you want to sit up here and say, oh man, he don't know what he's talking about, yet again, this is coming from an Ohio State fan. I wish this dude well. Ohio State fans talking about his own fan base were absolutely toxic towards him. Yep, that's all you need to know. He was a serviceable quarterback, that's a great word to use, and not half as bad as he was made out to be. He will not be a first round pick like Stroud, Fields, or Haskins, and we have been spoiled by that, but he's decent and will succeed elsewhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Clap it up, clap it up. Most reasonable Ohio State fan I've ever seen. It's simple, man. When you have a fan base that is as miserable, sad, and toxic as Ohio State has, this stuff is going to happen, and it will continue to happen year after year after year. As to what's next for Mr. Common Court here, don't know. Haven't thought about it too much at all, but I think a lot of schools are also going to go after him. To me, at least, he seems like a guy that he'd fit in almost anywhere. Best of luck to Common Court. Hate it ended this way, but yeah, it is what it is. And last but not least, we got to talk about the other big time news, and I even tweeted this out. How does Dylan Gabriel... Okay, so first things first. My apologies. Dylan Gabriel, he enters a portal. And my immediate reaction was, how does he even have eligibility left? Am I the only one shot by this? Because, okay, to put in perspective, even last year when he announced he was coming back, I was like, oh, dang. I thought the year before that was his last year, but hey, I guess he has another year, and that's all fine and dandy. But he's coming back again? What is this? His seventh or eighth year of college football? I'm going to remind some of y'all, Dylan Gabriel played two years at UCF. And what is happening, man? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I said he played two years at UCF. No, 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 Matt, you idiot. He played three years. This man next year is about to play his sixth year of college football. Call me a hater. I don't care. You can call me whatever you want. This is dumb, and I don't like it. There is no reason for a man to be playing six years of college football. None. I even think five is pushing the limit, but I don't have a problem with five. Where you get to six and seven years, no. Nah, that's why I'm like, dude, this is bull crap. And shout out to my man Thanos Washington IV. If that's your real name, that is an awesome name, but... Here's what he had to say. I just seen the ESPN notification as I was watching your last transfer report video. Thanks for watching, by the way. What's crazy to me is what is Oklahoma's missing that he's going to find anywhere else. And I agree. They have a great defense and a great offense. Finally, a complete team since the departure of Lincoln Riley. And according to this reply, he said right here, staff pretty much told him they're going with Arnold next year. Gives Gabriel a chance to earn one last college bag. And here's my question to all of you. Do you think that's real and legit? Because I've seen a lot of other people talking about that as well. The staff 
staff told Dylan Gabriel, hey, we're moving on. We're going to Jackson Arnold. Is there any validity to that statement? Don't know. I didn't make some calls and text messages, but yet again, it's the same thing with the Kyle McCord situation. I have a hard time believing that because Jackson Arnold, although we've seen a little of them, you don't know if the grass is going to be greener on the other side. And my point is with Jackson Arnold, there's a big question mark there. With Dylan Gabriel, you know he's a good slash great quarterback. I mean, come on now, what are we talking about? This guy had a game-winning drive against a playoff team in Texas. It's crazy to me even think for a split second the staff told him, hey, we're moving on. It's just not working out. I don't know if I buy that. And as shocked as I was when I heard he's entering the portal, I am more shocked at the fact that he has eligibility left. I can't emphasize that enough. There's so much going on. This video's already been long enough. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below. But that right